Hi everyone, welcome back to this Civray's InMove, where you can follow along with my progress at building an InMove robot. If you were watching the last video, you'll have seen that we've built up these lovely looking back covers. I think they're looking really nice on there now. And we've also got these really nice illuminated power switches down in the side of the robot. Two blue ones on this side and two green ones round on this side. And what we're going to be talking about in this video is power. How are we going to get power around to all these servos that we've now got fitted in the robot? So if we go over to the bench and take a look at some of the components that are going to build up our power circuits. As you know, I'm going to be using lithium polymer batteries. I think the standard InMove uses lead acid, um, but I, I like the idea of uh, using lithium polymer. I think Gael had his reasons for using uh, lead acid, but I think these should be a little more efficient, hopefully. They've got uh, XT60 connectors on the end of them. So I've built up this uh, little panel here where I've put some panel mount XT60 sockets. They've got uh, soldered connections on the back. So on the back of those, I'm gonna be soldering some 14 American wire gauge cable. It's a silicon insulated cable. Now I had to think about uh, how much current that cable needs to carry so I could decide what um, size cable to use. And I, I am just, just doing all this very roughly. Um, the InMove actually operates at six volts. Um, I think the, the hobby servos that we generally use in the InMove are rated at a maximum of six volts. We probably will push that a little bit higher, but to keep the mass simple, let's just think of that as a nominal six volts. Now I don't know how much current the InMove requires, but I had have heard uh, conversations of maybe pushing as high as 50 amps. I don't think it will be going anywhere near 50 amps, but it's kind of a, an absolute maximum that I'm using for my sums. Now if we're drawing 50 amps at six volts, um, we're, we're using 12 volt circuits, so we've doubled our voltage so we can halve our current. So those 50 amps will be halved to 25 amps. So the maximum current that this cable has to carry is 25 amps. So I think 14 American wire gauge should more than adequately do the job. Now, the other end of these cables, I'm going to connect to some terminal blocks. And then from these terminal blocks, I'm going to go up to our power switches that we've got in the side of the robot here and the two on the other side. Not sure which ones I'll use or how I'll arrange that, but we'll get to that later. And then from the power switches, I'll be feeding into the voltage regulators. I don't know how many voltage regulators we're going to use, but for now I'm looking at two. These are rated at 12 amps each, which will give us uh, 24 amps. And if we do need the 50 amps that we were talking about earlier, we're going to need a couple more of these or um, some, some other alternative ones. I, th I might use uh, a few smaller ones. And then from the output of these, I'm going, as you can see, I've got this one mounted in a little uh, custom made chassis that I've designed here. The output of these I'm going to take to this terminal block just so I can get a little bit more distribution and I can feed power around to different areas of the robot. And then out of these, I'm going to be feeding my other circuit boards. We've got boards such as the ones mounted on the top of the Arduinos. Um, we've got a board like this in the uh, bicep, which will feed the uh, elbow, wrist and hand. And we'll intend to put one up in the head. And we've also got one over here, which will be our stomach and the uh, NeoPixel ring. So we need to get power around to all of those. So they'll, they'll be coming from uh, these terminal blocks here. I'll have the same arrangement on this one. So I should be able to feed six different uh, circuit boards around the robot. So we've got to figure out how we can get all of this in the robot, which is the reason I wanted to get the back covers out of the way. So I knew how much space we had to play with. So let's have a look at where we're going to fit all of this. So I'll just go over this very quickly and then we'll look at it in more detail as we actually install the parts. The two Arduinos are going to mount in um, fairly standard positions, one on each side of the robot, one here and one on this side. I've got this um, bracket that I downloaded from Thingiverse, so I'll have to dig out the um, URL for that so that I can 
pop that in the description if anybody wants to know what bracket I used. We're using the uh, Arduino Mega, I think they're called the 2560, I think that's the number. What I'm intending to do is to fit the bracket so it fits right on the corner there of these other brackets that are already in place and then just line it up so it's vertical. Um, and that leaves this uh, small gap just in here below the, the hole where I'm running cables through. Now, I'm a little concerned about that because I don't know how much space I need to leave at the top because I'm intending to do the uh, neck upgrade, the, the Bob Houston style neck upgrade. I'll be using the standard in-move parts, but it's the Bob Houston style. So we need to fit um, servos up here. And I don't know how much space I need, so I don't know whether fitting the Arduino at that height leaves enough space. I, I think it does. Um, it looks like there's quite a bit of room there, but I'm not sure. I'm also not sure if we actually will still have access to this hole when the servo is installed. So it might be a mistake for me to run cables through this hole, but I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway. And if it is a problem when we do the neck upgrade, we'll, we'll change it at that point. Now I do briefly want to mention the USB cable because I'm going to be powering the Arduinos via USB and we're also going to be using the USB for the signals going from, um, which will probably be the Raspberry Pi, but at the moment I'm using a laptop, from the laptop to the Arduinos, it's going to be carried over USB. So I do need these USB cables and the connectors, the connectors are quite chunky and they take up a lot of room, which is a little annoying. My intention is to take the USB cable out of that square hole there, take it into the torso, and then we can bring it out at some other point in the torso and keep things neat. So that means that space below the Arduino is not really available for me to mount the voltage regulators. So if I just bring the voltage regulator in, we can see kind of how that's going to be arranged. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to mount them around here. There's a couple of problems. Obviously, I need to uh, avoid that USB cable. I have to bear in mind on the other one, it's sort of going to be more in the center. So I, I need to come um, right down to here, which actually leaves things very tight against the uh, switches there. So I might need some like right angle connectors or something to try and um, just sort of work out the clearance on that. That's that's a little annoying. Um, like I said, you, you run out of space really fast in here. You can see the problem down the bottom. You've got this uh, sort of large circular part. I know my hand is in the way. You've got that large circle part there and it's getting in the way of me moving the voltage regulator over to the side. The more I bring it to the side, the higher it goes because it follows the arc of that circle and then it gets in the way of our USB cable. So I'm going to have to sort of think very carefully about how I arrange that. Maybe do it something, maybe something like that might work. But that also means is that our batteries are going to have to sit behind these uh, voltage regulators, which is a little bit of a concern because I'm worried about these heat sinks. If they're going to get too hot, I don't really want them right near my lithium polymer batteries. But this is the plan. This is where I'm intending to put them. So I'm hoping they're not going to get too hot. Now, my intention is to fit this plate. Well, we got this big hole here in the center so I'm going to put the plate right there in the center like that I think that looks uh, quite neat in there and the batteries will plug into that so I'm gonna to have to move that but if you sort of keep your imagination that that's still there and then these batteries I'm gonna put them here and I'm actually gonna arrange them so that uh, one is below that um, those sockets and the other one is above the sockets so that then the cabling can plug in into the middle. Uh, but that does mean the battery has to sit in front of those voltage regulators, which means I'm going to have to turn the battery this way around because these batteries aren't square, they're actually rectangular. So because of the depth problem, I think I'm going to have to mount them like this which actually doesn't give me so much room on the height. So I'm still hoping I can get the two in one here and one up there and still have access to that, that big hole in the middle where 
the XT60 connectors are going to be. That's the that's the plan for the batteries. Now, as I said, off the back of the XT60s are going to be going through there. So we're going to have the silicon wires are going to be going backwards into the robot. If we try and spin him around. So looking at him from the front. I'm not intending to fit the uh, Xbox Connect controller in here, but I, I still want the option of doing that. But for now, I'm not, so I'm not too concerned. Um, I'm going to mount these these terminal strips in here. You can't actually get a little slot of access in here. I'm going to pop them in there like that. Um, so I'll be able to access the screws from the from the front of the robot. And the silicon cable will come through that big square hole and then turn sideways into these connectors. I think that'll work out just perfect. And then I'll be taking some more cabling from these terminals out back to the back of the robot uh, into the power switches. So that's where they're going. So that's the plan. Uh, I don't know if it'll work out. I don't know if I'll uh, hit any snags along the way, but that's what I'm intending to do. So let's uh, start mounting some of this stuff in here. So that's in there. It was a, a little awkward. It's a, it's a bit awkward working with the back covers in place. Normally you would fit these things before you fit the back covers. But like I said, I wanted the back covers there so I knew how much room I had to play with. Um, but I've got it in. I'm not totally convinced it's perfectly vertical, but it's, uh, it's fairly close. Um, I am a bit fussy about things like that, but it'll have to do. I'm slightly concerned that the screws are just ever so slightly protruding through the other side of uh, uh, these uh, torso plates and we've obviously got the movement of the um, servo for the arm in there and I'm a little worried about it but we'll have to see how that works out. The only other thing I want to mention is uh, if you do this um, don't over tighten these screws because the plastic isn't designed to have screws uh, screwed into it. There isn't a hole designed in, in the part, so there's no real uh, plastic behind there. You're just screwing into like literally hollow infill, so don't over tighten the screws. They do actually work quite well as long as you don't over tighten them. I haven't actually got the bracket for the other one, so I'm going to move on to looking at the voltage regulators. So I apologize, I haven't actually got any part numbers for these. I have no idea really who the supplier was either. Um, I got them from eBay. They're pretty cheap, so I'm again a little nervous about the quality of them, but I'm going to give them a go. They, as I said before, they're rated at 12 amps. Um, so again, I'm hoping that's going to be okay. Now I want these to feed uh, multiple circuit boards around the robot, and we only get like two screw terminals on the output. So I wanted a little terminal board and I've been hunting high and low for some terminal boards. Everything I found was kind of huge. Um, I did I did look at these terminals. I was considering these ones for a long time, but you actually have to fit a, a jumper bar in here, which sticks out quite a long way. And because um, without the jumper, they're all independent uh, circuits and I wanted them connected together. And that ends up being quite chunky. And as you saw, we, we don't have much room in our robot. So I, I wanted something smaller. And I kept looking around. I did also consider these, but they actually turned out to be much larger terminals than what I really wanted. Um, I was thinking about getting just the uh, the copper bars that, that make them up. And I was looking at all sorts of options. But in the end, what I decided to go with was this. I actually made up my own little terminal board, which is kind of compact and exactly what I wanted. I used this uh, strip board. Now, I didn't think I'd ever find a use for this stuff because it's a truly horrible, but it actually is perfect for this sort of thing. Because you've got the uh, copper strips, you connect the terminals in this way. Um, all, all three terminals you see here are connected together, which is what I wanted. So I've just cut through the uh, track to divide it into two halves um, that gives me three terminals for each one and what I'm intending to do is off the ends I've left one hole on the end I'm going to solder some wires on there and take a wire out from each side um, over into this block here and I'm hoping that's all going to be quite neat and compact and that mounts in there I actually think that's looking quite good 
I did actually have uh, four iterations at, at making these brackets, designed various ones, and I weren't happy with them. And finally, happy with the fourth one. It's a little awkward because there's some screws on the back of here, um, and they stick down, and I had to just make sure I had like clearance for everything. It's a bit of a pain, but um, it's, it's fun designing up your own parts. So if you do want these brackets, um, I guess they're useless to you unless you've got the uh, exact same buck converters as me and I haven't given you the part number so that's not very useful of me is it, but uh, if you do want them just ask, you know, they'll, they'll be readily available. So I've built this one up already but I'll uh, briefly show you what I did on the second one. I've got the second one here, the parts printed out, um, I just need to build up the this is actually another offcut from the same piece that I used to make up this one, so it's uh, already the correct width. So I just need to cut through on the length. Now what I do is I actually use a Dremel and I cut through along a row of holes. So it's uh, pretty easy to cut through this stuff. I think it's Bakelite. Um, it does um, smell quite horrible, so I'm sure it's probably toxic. So uh, if you're cutting this kind of stuff, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Um, what I did is I kind of popped it into the vise. I find it difficult to film over by the vise when I'm using the power tools, so I'll, I'll do that off camera. But I basically just uh, lightly cut through it and then snap it off. And then what I do, you end up with an edge like that, um, this edge across the top here, a little uh, rough. So I just uh, file it down. It's really soft. You can file it really easily. You can get a, a, a really nice result. So that's the board cut to size and fitted in there now. So what I've got to do next is cut through the tracks in the centre. So all I do is put my terminal blocks in where I want them so I know where I've got to make the cut. And then I just literally use the corner of my file. Just just gently file away the copper strips. We just want to remove the copper, we don't want to take any of the board away. But it is really soft, so it's really easy to do. So the next step will be to solder these in. Yeah, as easy as that. I'll need a couple of wires soldering on here. I'm not sure what size wire I'm going to use yet. I'm not actually sure how well you can see this, um, but I'm using a pair of helping hands. I've got one holding the board and then one holding the wire. It should keep everything still so I can solder it on. I've gone on to the next track a little bit, but it doesn't matter because we've not got anything connected to any of the other tracks. Finding the solder wants to stick to the wire and not the track. It could be... Uh, this board's old and these tracks are probably a bit dirty, but I think that'll be okay. So my intention here to hold the um, little terminal board in is just to use glue. I'll use a little bit of super glue, I think, I think that'll hold it. 
Um, I could have designed it a bit bigger and used screws, but I wanted to keep it nice and compact. So all I need to do now is to connect up these wires into this uh, output terminal, just making sure I've got the negative and positive around the right way. There's a little mark on the board, negative here and positive on that side. So I've coloured it up. I think they're fairly conventional colours to use black for negative and red for positive. So the black one's going to be a little tight. Um, I think I'll tin the wires with a bit of solder. Sorry, I did the first one and realized the camera wasn't running. I can actually pull that out because I haven't stuck it in yet. See it looks like there's a bit of gunk down in the terminal. No idea what that is. It's not really good. Might be from where I was filing. And you want to do the screws up tight but not over tighten them because these little blue terminals tend to kind of ring off the circuit boards. I haven't tested these boards, I have no idea if they're going to work. So uh, hopefully you can see the idea of what my plan was. the job so yeah a little bit of uh, glue to hold this in and then uh, four screws just to hold the the main board down yeah so I'm pretty happy with how that turned out I've popped a little bit of super glue in there and then stuck that little terminal board down I've also fitted the screws in the four corners so this one's completely finished now we just need to let the glue dry I do need to um, finish off the second one, just pop the wires in, a bit more glue and four screws and we'll be there with a pair of them. And what I've done next is to print out this second bracket for the second Arduino. So I've got that 3D printed and I've screwed the Arduino down onto it. I'm a little bit worried I'm getting a, a bit carried away here with myself. Normally I like to test out each individual part before I attach it onto the robot and none of this is tested. Um, this is a brand new Arduino, never been powered on and the same for these um, buck converters, I've never powered them on so I don't even know if any of this works and also the board that I made up myself, I've never never turned it on so I don't know, never put any sort of power through it so I don't know if any of this will work so I might be getting carried away but I'll, I'll just carry on anyway. 
Um, I'm using these tiny little screws now. Um, these are number two by uh, five millimeters. So that it's even smaller than a quarter inch because quarter inch is 6.3 and these are five millimeters. So they are really tiny, um, but they're perfect. They they fit just, just right into these um, Arduinos because this screw here is really tight up against the plastic and these little number two screws are perfect and I've used them as well in the um, buck converters to attach them down. So I'll pop this onto, onto here and then we can get uh, all three of these boards attached into the robot. finally got them in it's a bit fiddly uh, a little awkward to drill the holes with the back covers already in place you ideally would want to be fitting these boards on here before you install the back covers but as I said before I wanted to know what room I had so that's kind of quite a milestone for me I've been working towards this for a long time now getting these boards installed and then it's kind of feels good to see them finally in there I am not 100% certain everything is straight and level, but uh, I, I think it will do. So the next step would be to install this in here and I'll have to solder the wires onto it first. But I've actually, for the first time, been able to see how much space there is for the battery. So if we clip on this battery cover, And then if I try and feed a battery in from underneath, I can try and do this without dropping it. Now, I don't know what you can see down there. Um, what I'm looking at is how far away I am from that heat sink. See that's that's touching the heatsink, but I can pull the battery back here, and we've got a uh, space uh, down there for a bit of an air gap. The camera's not showing the best angle, and it's struggling to focus. But for the first time, I've actually been able to verify that the batteries will fit. Yeah, it's a little close to that heatsink, but I think that'll be okay. It's really going to depend on how hot they get. I'll just pull that out before I drop the battery. So I think what I actually want to do is make up a bracket that holds the two batteries, um, kind of like battery clips. So I could redesign this uh, plate so that it actually incorporates some uh, battery clips so the batteries can clip on just in front of it and hold them the right distance up so that they're away from the heat sink. Um, so I'm going to have a little think about that. I've had a complete change of mind of how I mount the batteries so I've designed and I'm now printing out a new battery box. I've really got no idea whether this is going to work or not so it's a bit of a gamble. Um, this is going to take nearly eight hours to print out and I don't even know if it's going to fit so we'll see. So this is my new idea for a battery box. Each battery will fit inside here like this. And the idea here is that the battery can't slide uh, side to side because we've got this uh, piece here blocking it from moving that way. And then it's uh, closed in at this end. So again, it can't slip out in that direction. So it can't move side to side and it can't move up and down because it's uh, sandwiched between this piece and this piece. These are slightly rounded at one end because the battery is rounded at one end. So that means the bottom one will go in the other way around like that. And then the idea is they're going to um, plug in here.
so I've soldered up the sockets I did that off camera it's uh, quite difficult because the uh, connections are so big but there's two there ready to go and then they just need to be fitted down inside uh, here so I'll pop them in there so there I'm quite pleased with that so they're the uh, panel mount XT60 connectors uh, these tiny little black screws have a Torx head on them which is a uh, number six so it's a T6 Torx head screw on that for my reference um, yeah both in there and then the cables are exiting out the back like that it's quite tight but they weren't too bad to get in there it wasn't too difficult and as I said the batteries will connect in they'll sit in there like that and then they can just plug into that XT60 connection there so I think that works out quite nice now what I've got to do next is mount this in the back of the robot somehow so as you can hear in the background I'm printing off some brackets that will attach to the back of these holes and then attach to the back of the robot so I just have to wait for those to finish printing I'm kind of making this up as I go along now I've designed a, a little bracket in here and screwed it to the back of the torso and I've got two M3 nuts sort of contained in the back there um, there's a, a space at the back so you can get the nut in and just pull it up with the screw and then I'm going to fit another one across the top here so that battery bracket will fix on to these four fixings here and here but before I put that on I need to get some more wiring done because it's going to cover up uh, this row of terminals and this row of terminals so I need to get the wiring in there first and then I can go ahead and put that battery box in place this is just arrived from Amazon I have no idea how you pronounce that name so I'm not even gonna attempt to this is silicon wire and I'm gonna use this to sort of distribute power around the robot this is um, 20 American wire gauge, 20 AWG. It's very thin actually. I think I would have ordered uh, 18 gauge if uh, I'd realized how thin it was going to be. I think this will uh, still be able to carry the current, but I probably would up it to 18 gauge at some point. This battery box, once it's installed inside the back of the robot, it's actually going to cover up these terminals or at least some of them so I wanted to get the wiring done on those terminals first but then I started to wire them up I've got uh, two wires here and they're going up to uh, my first Arduino board or the servos that are mounted off the back of the Arduino board and then I thought ah, I haven't actually uh, checked the voltage on these um, and after I've got the uh, battery cover in the way that might be a little tricky so I thought I wanted I want to just power these up and you can actually see I've got one powered up I've got a little green LED light in here um, but I couldn't power them up until I've wired up the battery box so that's a, a little bit of a chicken and egg situation I need the battery box on before I can power the um, voltage regulators but I need the battery box off whilst I set them up so what I've done is I've just hooked up a wire in the bottom of here taken that over to a pair of terminals here and I've got one battery plugged in here and then what I've done is I've just put a voltmeter across uh, these terminals and it was actually outputting something like ten and a half volts um, so I'm glad I did check that and what I did is I adjusted this trim pot here just turned it anti-clockwise and watched the voltage come down on the voltmeter 
Um, I couldn't really film that whilst I was doing it. I needed both hands. And wound that down. And it's now exactly 6 volts. Um, I probably will want to adjust that slightly higher in the future. But I'm going to start off safe and just keep within the specs of the servos and go with 6 volts exactly. So I'll need to do the same on the other one. One other thing I've done in preparation if we come round to the front of the robot. I actually mounted these uh, terminals in here. So I've got one on this side and one on this side. One will be positive and one will be negative. I'm not sure which will be which yet. It doesn't really matter. But I have noticed that with the ones that I've got on the bench over here, they're a bit problematic because the, the, they're really too big for the thin wires. Uh, even for the uh, big chunky 14-gauge uh, wire, you can just see it sort of squashed down in the bottom here. These terminals are really way too big. I couldn't find anything in this kind of style that was a smaller terminal. Now for the big 14-gauge uh, wires, that shouldn't be a problem. I might put a ferrule on the end, a bootlace ferrule. I might just solder, you know, tin the ends of the wire. Um, I think either way they'll be fine. But the really little ones, there's actually uh, the the radius of the circle in the terminal is actually too big, and there's too much of a curve at the bottom for the screw to actually grip down on the wire. The screw actually hits the sides of the curve, and the wire sitting in the bottom, it doesn't grip on it. So I've had to fold the wire over four times to get the screw to grip down onto it, which is probably what I'll, I'll have to do. I do think the wires I'm going to be using are slightly thicker, but they're still very thin wires, so these terminals are really too big. But I'm going to have to make do because I couldn't find anything smaller. So I'll set up the other one, and then we should hopefully get this battery box installed. So I've completed all these connections here, and these ones here. Um, silicon wire was a little interesting to work with. It was a little more tricky than I thought. I'm not sure if I like the silicon wire or not, but um, it's in now. So I'll just explain what these are feeding. Uh, as you can see, I've got uh, three circuits on this side and three circuits on this side. Um, this one here is um, one circuit is going up to uh, these headers here on the uh, first Arduino that will feed the uh, shoulder and then I've got another set of connections coming up and they're actually going these two wires here they're going up here through and out and they'll go out to the bicep I'll have a little board here probably down here actually and um, that'll feed the bicep and we'll piggyback off that to go down to the hand and the third connection that's coming off of this one is going downwards you can see the uh, two wires coming down here going down here and that's feeding the stomach that's the top stomach that that's feeding now on the other side we've got the same for two of the circuits we've got one going up into here for these headers here for the other shoulder and um, again, we've got another pair of uh, wires coming up here and going out to the bicep and hand. And then the other set of cables we've got coming up here this time are actually going up to the head. So they're going up through the neck and they'll supply power to the head. So they're the six circuits that I'm powering off of these voltage regulators. Two shoulders, two hands, um, a head and a stomach. So I can now finally go ahead and install that battery box in there. So that battery box is now screwed in. Uh, it's not quite straight. It's it's pretty close. Um, if I try and get the camera down here, I'm looking at the the gap across here. I mean, it's not far out. I think it is just slightly closer at this end than it is that end, but. I think it'll uh, it'll do. We're not going to see it when we put the main cover over anyway. Round the front of the robot, 
what I've got to do now, I've got my four sort of fat silicon wires here. I need to take this, the two blacks out to one of our terminal blocks and the two reds off to the uh, other terminal block. They're connected in, uh, two blacks and two reds. Um, I could have made them shorter, but I thought I'll leave the cables long for now. can always come back and shorten them later. Um, but if I do change my mind with anything, I obviously can't make the cable longer again once I've cut it short. So it is a little messy for now, but we can always come back and tidy up. Okay, so what I've done is I've put um, pairs of wires into each terminal. So I'm doubling up on the wires to make them a bit thicker so that they're a bit bigger to go into those terminals. And I've taken uh, two, two pairs of black ones. So we've got four black wires and then two pairs of red ones. So I've got four red wires. I'm going to take them all forward to the... Uh, sorry, I should say I'm going to take them all backwards through to the back of the robot, straight through the centre here. And the wiring on the switches themselves, um, they're not actually labelled. All we've got on here is numbers one, two, and three. Now I've put a, a meter across uh, the terminals, and I think if I put the zero at the top, um, that's the uh, so the number one will be the top connection, and I think that that is the feed in. And then I think this middle pin is the switched um, wire out, and then this will be the ground for the lamp. There seems to be some resistance between these two, which I think is the lamp. Um, and it seems to be about the same, regardless of whether the switch is on or off. And I think that makes sense, because the lamp is connected across these two pins all the time. It's just that it'll only get power when the uh, middle pin is powered by activating the switch. Power will connect from this one to this one, which will then allow current to flow through the lamp back through the return so i think that's how it goes um positive in positive out and then this one will be the ground okay so we'll have a quick recap we've got the two red wires here feeding into the top of the switch and then the center connections which are green and yellow here these are the switched outputs I've got the yellow one feeding into this voltage regulator and we've got the green one feeding into this voltage regulator. Then we've got the return ground wires. I've got one black wire going to one switch and then I've piggybacked off onto the other switch and they are the uh, return wires for the lamps in the switches. And then the other black wire that I brought out is actually down in here. It's the return wire for the voltage regulator itself. And then we've got the exact same setup on this side, only difference being we haven't actually made any connections to the switched output. You can see the centre pins there are got no connection on them. So these switches aren't doing anything, but they should illuminate. One final touch that I did was to add a little voltmeter here. This is actually connected to the front of the robot, so it's actually telling us the voltage of the batteries the high voltage circuits, the 12 volt circuits. You can see it says 12.5, meaning that these are fully charged 3S LiPos. So, moment of truth. What happens when we switch it on? We should see the switch is illuminating and we should also see a little green LED down in there if I turn that off. See it fades out, comes back on. So that switch is correctly powering that one. And on the other side, we should see another little green LED in there. Yeah, and again, the switch is illuminated. So they're working. And on this side, we've got the switches illuminating, but they're not actually connected to anything, so they're not powering anything up. So there, we basically did it. We've now got power fully distributed around the robot. We've got power to these headers here for the shoulders. We've got some power cables coming out here for the arms. A pair on that side and a pair on that side. They'll go down into the biceps and feed the forearms. 
and hand and wrist. Um, we've got power up here, two wires feeding into the head and when we reattach the head and we've got power down here feeding this board which is for the stomach. So we did it, basically power fully distributed all the way around the robot. We'll leave it here because I think that's a good place to stop and we've achieved the objective of putting power all around the robot. I think we've achieved quite a lot. We've got the two Arduinos installed, we've got the batteries installed, the voltage regulators installed, power switches on each side and everything is wired up regarding power anyway. So if you made it this far in the video, thanks for sticking with me. I know they can be quite long. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.